Jack, we're just talking to Ryan Porteous there. How pleased are you to see him back in the Scotland squad? Yeah, delighted for him. Um, I think it's a um, testament to his performance level this season, the maturity I think he's shown through the early part of the season and, and well deserved. I know he's had that taste of it previously. Um, and I think he's had to work hard to, to get that opportunity again. So really pleased for him individually and I think hopefully for us as a club it's a good reflection on, on where we're at at the moment as well. He said that you and John Potter were saying don't go in there to make up the numbers, try and make sure you, you give Steve Clark a bit of a, a headache. Um, do you think he, he's the type that can do that in that environment? Yeah, I think he has a, he has a confidence about himself. Um, and I think he backs his ability. He's, what he's done this season in particular is he's, um, he's had a real good consistency about his standards every single day. Um, I know John went to see him train with the Scotland 21s as well and commented that even we thought when he was in their group about how he was going about things. And hopefully that's, um, that becomes second nature to him. So if he can go in and replicate that within a really strong group, then it will stand him in good stead. And, you know, it's an opportunity for him not just to go and train with them, but to try and force him his way into Steve's reckoning and, and make that next step of achieving a cap. Because it's one thing to be selected within the squad, but the next big step for him at a young, as at a young age would be to, to earn that first cap. Can you give us an update on transfers in terms of Kel McGuinness? We know him have made bids. Is there any further update? No. Um, you know, I think naturally he's, he's a player that isn't mine, so I wouldn't comment on it any further. I know... Um, there was comment made during the week, but from my point of view, we've continued to try and identify players that fit a certain profile that we think will continue to improve and strengthen us, and um, we'll keep doing that um, until until we manage to get the right ones in. Alan Campbell? No, I mean I think that's um, just probably a very obvious one to to um, for people to mention because I'm sure he'll attract an awful lot of attention. But again. Similar to, to Kyle, he's, in, he's plays for another team, plays for another manager, so not really in a position for me to comment properly about those players. Are you confident you'll be able to get somebody else in uh, before Monday, or do you feel you need another player in at least? Um, I'd be confident, I think, in our ability to do so. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty small in numbers at the moment, but I like that, and I think it's worked well for us. We could certainly do with one other coming in, but we've been really diligent about recruitment so far and we want to make sure it's one that will, will improve and strengthen us and continue to work hard to doing it. We haven't managed to do it yet, but we'll, we'll keep plugging away until until the close of the window. And if we, if we don't, then I've got a squad at the moment that um, it's very obvious to say I've been pleased with, given how we've started the season. How difficult is it, especially if other teams are in there? We know Aberdeen ended up getting Ross McCrory. There's speculation about them being after players that Hibs are after. Can Hibs be competitive? Can, can you tell the fans that they're confident that Hibs will give it their best shot to get players in? Yeah, I think within um, there's always certain parameters you have to work with, and every club will have constraints on what they can do. But um, we've tried to trade cleverly um, through the, the last few months, and we have, you know, I said we mentioned earlier about the numbers we've, we've reduced in the squad, um, and that's enabled us to, to try and then bring. We felt quality, but as I said, lighter in numbers. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with how we've, we've approached it. Um, we've got the ability to try and be competitive. There'll always be a ceiling on that, and we have to be realistic about that as well. But um, we'll continue to work hard at identifying the right type of profile and doing as much as we can to bring them to the club. I just feel fortunate to be in a situation where you can you can go out and, and, and spend fees on players when there's so much kind of belt tightening going on around the industry. Yeah, but it, it, it's all relative. You know, there's teams, there's loads of other teams signed players, and there's other, there's teams that have signed a lot more players than us. Um, so it depends on how you how you add up the total cost of that. If you look at it on a wage spend and a total wage spend, as opposed to a fee, then there might not often be that much between it. So as I said, we've had to be clever with what we've done. You know, I take your point. I'm pleased that we've been able to. Um, to go and speculate a little bit, if you like, and I think that's where the chairman has, has been very good in that sense. I think he recognises the the importance of of taking some calculated risks in terms of how we move the club forward and how we try and create resale value in the future some, for some assets, because the club obviously has done that successfully in recent times with John McGinn. So I think it's a good model, but equally you have to have an ownership that's prepared to back that, and certainly Ron has done that so far. said that you have a board of directors who are... Happy to, to look at it that way, to look at it as a long-term investment is it a chance for, for Hibs to to strengthen and to and to move ahead of, of others who, who maybe are not looking at it in that way and are, are looking almost kind of retrenching a little. 
We um, we feel as if we're in a good place at the moment, and that, and I think that is the time where you should look to strengthen, um, and not only in, you know, quite often we make the mistake only looking to try and improve in, in times of crisis or when we're really struggling. So I think the club has recognised. I think we've got an ownership model that um, believes in that. And they said we are trying really hard to identify a certain profile of player. And you know, this week's been encouraging us for in that respect because the Ryan we called up to the full squad, the Josh Doig and the Scottish nineteens, Murray Johnston, who's who's only fifteen but has trained with us every day in Scotland seventeens, Alex Gogic making that progression in the separate national squad. As we can continue to to recruit players or bring their own players through, they get that type of recognition, we'll, we'll be good as a club and, and we will create that um resale value in the future which, which enables you to, to continue that cycle. I think it's a, I think it's a blueprint that, um, that every team looks to try and follow, and um, not just in Scotland and other countries. Um, I think case in point is probably where where young Aaron Hickey has moved to at Bologna. If you look at their structure as a club and how they do things, they they have been hugely successful in in recruiting a certain profile of player. And, and moving them in, at some point in the future and then creating um, something that's economically viable to continue as a club. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we're all searching for. It's, it's not easy. Um, if it was easy to find a John McGinn all the time, then I think everybody would do it. But I think, as I said earlier, it's about making um, calculated gambles at times and, and, and giving yourself the best possible chance at, at having that type of player again at your club. What about Hamilton? How tough a game do you think that'll be? Well, I think what um, what they've done, I know it's, it's, it's talked about often, but the, um, their ability to to blood young players and give young players a platform and maintain their premiership status is, is hugely admirable. Certainly under Martin's time in charge and now when Brian, since Brian's taken over as well, and um, Brian's somebody that I've known a long time, we've got a lot of respect for and enjoy playing against his teams. And um, The results today already this season have shown how difficult opponents they can be. So another tough match for us, but... Good, looking forward to it. It's nice to be back at Easter Road um, with a couple of tough games back to back, so I'm um, looking forward to Friday night. It's a case of building up that momentum again. Yeah, we, um, uh, we were pleased that we came away with something from the two games because I think everybody in the league knows when you, when you play the old firm back to back, and this season in particular, with how important points are to them every single week, that they're really two really tough matches, and they proved to be the case. So to take something from them meant that. Um, our momentum wasn't completely stopped I mean, and it's an opportunity for us on Friday to hopefully get back to winning games. Going into the international break though as well, ending on a high, is that something that you can then sit back and have another look at where things have gone and how pleased you've been? It is another one for us that we know that although we've got fixtures in the immediate aftermath of Friday evening that we know it, um, it gives us a little breather from the league again. So. Um, it's an important one, it's a really, really big one for us. You know, for me, arguably the biggest game of the season at the moment to go into to Friday evening and win that match and know that we've got a fortnight's break before the next, the next league game, but we know we would then go into that period um, in a good place in the league. So, really big game for us. Um, all OK with the exception of Scott, obviously still misses out, but everybody else um, is fit and healthy. Sean Mackey's back full training, but obviously hasn't played a lot of game time, but with no other injury concerns at the moment. Jack, can I just ask you about the handball rule? Asking managers today what, what your thoughts are on it um, at the minute and all the controversy it's causing. What do you think of it? It's, um, it's probably been less of an issue for us because we don't have VAR. And so I'm sure if we had that, then there would have been occasions this year where it would have been open or, or, or to much more discussion and debate. I know there was a couple of instances last weekend that caused some discussion in the aftermath of it. It's, um, it's a rule that it's probably changed a lot, but not needed to change a lot, if that makes sense. And I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one to get right um, in terms of what the guidelines are. But certainly, I think when you look at some of the instances that um, happened south of the border last week, it, it becomes very, very harsh to award penalties when people aren't even looking at the ball. So, um, look, I'm not the person that's this task with having to decide what's right and what's wrong in that respect. but. I think it's an area that no doubt will cause some debate through the course of the season as well.